to the epic stage of the Second Natural Serbia Conference. So I would like to hear your impressions of the conference, on the organization, the participants, the choice of the topics and speakers. Well, honestly, I have to say um, that I've been to a lot of different conferences and there are key parts on this conference which I really enjoy, which are fundamentally different from some of the other conferences. Like, um, the organization has been spot on. I've had been very treated very well throughout the whole conference and uh, a lot of interesting topics and, and speaker choices as well, high quality. And uh, what actually amazed me the most was the ratio between uh, men and women which you usually don't see at these conferences, which is amazing here. It's like 60 to 40 or even, you know, even higher, which I really, really, really like. And uh, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for the Serbian community. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, tell me, how does an interesting day of a DevOps birth assistant at ThoughtWorks look like? Uh, very unusual. Um, so I, I, I don't I don't have the usual working day. I I travel a lot. So I'm usually usually have like three to four flights each and every week, which means I'm with different clients, also working with different colleagues. Um, uh, some weeks I don't even get to touch any code. Some some weeks I do nothing but touching code. So it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of changing. Um, Changing responsibility, but also changing, you know, work foc work focus or uh, changing the the overall structure of what I do, and mainly, it's what, I mean, obviously, I work with clients directly, but it's always a new challenge each and every week. So it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's something that I was looking for when I joined ThoughtWorks, um, and it's something that I really enjoy right now. Who knows for how long I will be enjoying it in the future, but right now it's pretty cool. How do the clients uh, react to DevOps principles and everything else? Um, so with DevOps, it's always the kind of mixed big spacks, right? So they always they always tell me this is the this is our future, right? This is what we want to do, and then you come to them and you tell them, well. To actually realize this, you will have to do A, B, C, and D. And they said, "Well, maybe we, maybe we can do A, but B, C, D never." And I tell them, "That's that's not how it works. I'm sorry." So um, it's a long and winding process with every structural and cultural change. It's it's always something that you have to plan for for a long time. So we have a long tail of probably two to three years with every customer that we every customer that we have. It's something we don't come in for three months or six months and tell them afterwards you're going to be much more efficient and you're going to do DevOps. No, it's usually it's this will be a change which will pick up the pace slowly. I usually draw a curve. So if this is the, your current situation and the productive curve that you have is usually dipping down in the beginning because you're trying to adapt, you're trying to learn new things. And then afterwards it's slowly spinning up again until it surpasses your current productivity level. And then it just goes straight up because at this, uh, with this point in time, you basically have adapted well enough to utilize all these new processes and utilize all of these new you know, ideas and ideals that you've come to before. But that's a, that's a, long, it's a long process. Okay. Uh, DevOps principles demand strong interdepartment communication. So, can you tell us uh, how do you achieve that? So, uh, it, it it usually is getting people to talk to one another. One of the uh, one of the largest issues that people have within a company is always communication on some level or another. So it's uh, either communication within a team, communication from team to team, communication communication between departments, and putting an emphasis on that through, for example, certain rituals like uh, um, show and tells. That's what we call them. So certain meetings where people come together, and what they do is the only thing they tell them they tell each other what good things they've done in the past, um, or things like uh, the usual. Agile practices, retrospectives, um, uh, reviews. So just being able to transparently show one another how valuable the the work that they've done is and how valuable it might be for them is something that fosters communication pretty effectively. But then again, sometimes it has to be focused. So sometimes you just have to get everybody in one room, which is also what I advocate for people who are working distributed, for example, in a distributed fashion. So I usually tell them, you can work in a distributed fashion, you have to work distributed first. So it's not like people can sometimes work remotely, but the company is still working in a fashion that it's situated in one room and everybody has to apply to that. But it's actually, you have to make sure that everybody's included, you have to make sure that remote is something which is a first class citizen. Even if you do that, you will still have certain occasions where you get everybody in one room and you get everybody together. At ThoughtWorks, for example, we have these, these things called away days, which is 
uh, for example, the European Away Day, um, where you get everybody who's working in Europe for ThoughtWorks, which is quite a lot of people, it's like a thousand people. You get everybody in one location and you have a, essentially a two-day conference made by thought workers for thought workers you get everybody together these are great opportunities for sharing knowledge for getting to know new people you know fostering the relationship with, with thought workers you've never seen or have haven't seen before or maybe you haven't seen in a long while and that's essentially what i mean it's a mixture between making sure everybody is productive wherever they're working at and getting getting everybody together when the opportunity arises or when it's necessary Actually, you partly uh, answered to my next question, which was, uh, what happens with teams that are physically distributed? Yes. Uh, you, you give a part of the answer, uh, because it is the hot topic in the IT world. Mm. Uh, but uh, what we are interested in, are the DevOps principles um, actually ap applicable in companies with many mm. distributed teams? Mm -hmm. So, I would say it really depends on what your... Um, what your abstraction is for the problems that DevOps tries to solve. So DevOps is a methodology which tries to make sure that everybody is participating within the development process when it comes to infrastructure. And for that you need certain abstractions. So you couldn't physically have everybody who's working remotely administer a physical server somewhere in a cabinet. That's impossible, right? You have to, you would have to ship it back and forth. You, you would never do that. So you have, would have to have some kind of abstraction, maybe even a product like a cloud service, for example. Mm -hmm. And these services usually have a well-defined API and these services usually have training capabilities or have certifications or have, you know, examples on the web which you can use, which means theoretically it doesn't the the web api doesn't care whether you're in you know belgrade or in novi sad or in berlin or it it's it, uh, you don't have to, don't have to tell it where you are it's reacting the same way and that's that would be essentially my answer to the question is find the right level of abstraction for the pro, for the product or the problem that you're trying to address with devops and once you have that you will be able to work much more independently also co-located or independent from the location that you've worked for, worked at before thank you and finally what is your message to Serbian IT community? I think my message, message would be, um, uh, since it's still growing, um, try to learn from the mistakes that uh, other larger, already larger communities have been doing in the past, uh, because they're all, all out there. We're you know open society when it comes to these technical uh, difficulties or, or errors in the past, and uh, try to build something which is uh, unique and fits your market as well. Um, I think there are a couple of examples already with a voting system that you guys have built, for example, which I find amazing. It's one of the best things that I've seen at a conference thus far. Um, and once you actually do that, you can basically leverage the, this, this new spirit that you have and drive it forward. I, I see huge opportunities here. Thank you very much. Absolutely.